The topic of discussion for today's session is the anatomy of the duodenum as well as its clinical importance. Duodenum is the first, shortest, widest and most fixed part of the small intestine. Duodenum has a C-shaped course around the head of the pancreas. It begins at the pylorus and ends at the duodeno-jejunal flexure. It lies at the level of umbilicus and opposite to that of first, second and third lumbar vertebrae. And it is 25 centimeters long and most of the duodenum is retroperitoneal and it is fixed by the peritoneum to the structures on the posterior abdominal wall. And the next is parts of the duodenum. The duodenum is divided totally into four parts. That is, the superior part is called as first part. Second is the descending part, which is the second part. Next is the horizontal part, which is the third one. And at last is the ascending part, is the fourth part. Now let us discuss about each and every part in detail. Now let us talk about the first part of the duodenum or the superior part. It is short, approximately 5 centimeters in length and it lies anterolateral to the body of L1 vertebrae. So here the first 2 centimeters of the superior part of the duodenum immediately distal to the pylorus known as ampulla that is also called as duodenal cap and it has a mesentery and it is mobile. The distal 3 centimeters of the superior part have no mesentery and it is immobile and the superior part begins at the pylorus and goes backwards, upwards and to the right and ends at the superior duodenal flexure. And now let us talk about what are the peritoneal relations of the first part of the duodenum. So here the proximal 2 centimeters of superior part is attached to the lesser omentum above and greater omentum below. And the distal 3 centimeters is retroperitoneal in nature and it is fixed with the anterior surface covered by the peritoneum. And what are the visceral relations? Anteriorly, if you see the quadrate lobe of the liver, gallbladder, and next posteriorly, the gastroduodenal artery and the bile duct and the portal vein. Superiorly, it has an epiploic foramen and inferiorly, head and neck of the pancreas. This is what you need to know about the first part of the duodenum. And the next one is the second part or the descending part of the duodenum. It is longer, 7.5 centimeters long, and it descends along the right side of L1 to L3. It runs inferiorly, curving around the head of the pancreas, and it begins at the superior duodenal flexure and passes downwards towards the lower border of L3 and curves towards left at inferior duodenal flexure to become continuous with the third part of the duodenum. And let us talk about what are the peritoneal relations of the second part of the duodenum. It is retroperitoneal and fixed. In the middle of anterior surface, it is directly related to the colon where as the rest of the anterior surface is covered by peritoneum. And what are the visceral relations of the second part? Anteriorly, right lobe of the liver, transverse colon, root of the transverse mesocolon and the small intestine. All these structures form the anterior visceral relations of the second part of the duodenum. And posteriorly, the medial border of anterior surface of the right kidney, right renal vessels, right edge of inferior vena cava and right psoas major. So these are the structures which forms the posterior aspect of the second part. And medially, as you can see on the screen, head of the pancreas as well as its associated bile duct and laterally it has right colic flexures. So these are the visceral relations of the second part. And let us talk about the major duodenal papillae. If you see the interior of the second part of the duodenum, you can easily identify the major duodenal papilla. It is nothing but an elevation 8 to 10 centimeters distal to the pylorus where 
the hepatopancreatic ampulla opens. So, a longitudinal fold which is present known as a plica longitudinalis which is present below the major duodenal papilla. And next is minor duodenal papilla which is located above the major duodenal papilla. So, the minor duodenal papilla is an opening for accessory pancreatic duct which is located 6 to 8 centimeters distal to the pylorus. And now next is the third part of the duodenum which is the horizontal part. It is 6 to 8 centimeters long and lies at the level of L3 vertebra. It begins at the right side of the lower border of L3 and passes horizontally and ends by joining to fourth part of the duodenum. And what are the peritoneal relations of the third part? It is retroperitoneal and fixed. Anterior surface of the inferior part is covered with the peritoneum except where it is crossed by the superior mesenteric vessels and the root of mesentery. And what are the visceral relations? Anteriorly, it has the superior mesenteric vessels as well as the root of mesentery. And posteriorly, right psoas major, inferior vena cava, abdominal iota with the origin of inferior mesenteric artery and the right testicular and ovarian vessels. And superiorly, you can see head of the pancreas and uh, uncinate process and inferiorly coils of jejunum. These are the visceral relations of the third part of the duodenum. And next is the fourth part which is also called as the ascending part of the duodenum. It is also short that is 5 centimeters and it begins at the left of the L3 vertebra and rises superiorly as far as the superior border of the L2 vertebra. It runs superiorly along the left side of the iota to reach the inferior border of the body of the pancreas and here it curves anteriorly to join the jejunum at the duodeno jejunal flexure. So it is supported by the attachment of a suspensory muscle of the duodenum which is called as ligament of traits. And next what is ligament of traits? which is also called as suspensory muscle of duodenum. It is composed of a slip of skeletal muscle from the diaphragm and a fibromuscular band of smooth muscle from the third and fourth parts of the duodenum. And it is composed of following stripped muscle fibers mostly in the upper parts, elastic fibers in the middle part and the plain muscle fibers in the lower parts. It facilitates the movement of the intestinal contents mainly by means of contraction which widens the angle of duodeno jejunal flexure. So what are the peritoneal relations? It is mostly retroperitoneal and it is covered anteriorly with the peritoneum and its terminal part is mobile and suspended by uppermost part of the mesentery. And what are the visceral relations of the fourth part? So here anteriorly the visceral relations are transverse colon, transverse mesocolon, lesser sac and stomach. And posteriorly left sympathetic chain, left renal artery, left gonadal artery and inferior mesenteric vein. And superiorly you can see the body of the pancreas and uh, to the right attachment of the upper part of the root of the mesentery and to the left, left kidney. These are the points what you need to know about the fourth part. Now, let us discuss about the neurovascular structures of the duodenum and the first is the arterial supply. So, part of the duodenum proximal to the entry of the bile duct into the descending part of the duodenum is supplied by the superior pancreatico duodenal artery which is the branch of gastro duodenal artery. And as you can see in this picture, that the part of the duodenum distal to the entry of the bile duct is mainly supplied by inferior pancreatico duodenal artery which is a branch of superior mesenteric artery. So additional blood supply for the first part of the duodenum is mainly from the right gastric artery, supraduodenal artery of Wilkie which is the branch of common hepatic artery and some branches from the right gastroepiploic artery and uh, 
Retroduodenal branches mainly arises from the gastroduodenal artery. This is what you need to know about the arterial supply of the duodenum. Next is the venous drainage. So here, duodenum drains into splenic, superior mesenteric, as well as the portal veins. And the lymphatic drainage, majority of the lymphatic drainage of the duodenum drains into pancreaticoduodenal nodes inside the curve of duodenum. So the pancreaticoduodenal nodes drains into hepatic nodes. From there, it finally drains into celiac nodes. And some amount of lymph from the pancreaticoduodenal nodes drains into superior mesenteric nodes. And uh, from there, it drains into cisterna chile. So finally, whether from the celiac nodes or whether from the pancreaticoduodenal nodes, they finally drain into cisterna chile. But some vessels from the first part of the duodenum drains into pyloric nodes, from there into hepatic nodes, from there finally into celiac nodes. This is what you need to know about uh, the lymphatic drainage and next is the nerve supply. Sympathetic innervation is from T9 to T10 spinal segments and the parasympathetic nerve supply is from the vagus via celiac plexus. Next is histology of the duodenum. Now let us talk about the mucous membrane which lines the duodenum. The mucous membrane contains evaginations in the form of villi with columnar cells which has the microvilli and invaginations to form crypts of Liberkin. The muscularis mucosae contain two layers of muscles and next is the submucosa which mainly contains mucus secreting Brunner glands and next layer is the muscularis externa. Muscularis externa contains the outer longitudinal and the inner circular layer of muscle fibers. This is what you need to know about uh, histology of uh, duodenum. Next, what about the clinical significance? First one is the duodenal ulcer. Inflammatory erosions of the duodenal mucosa is called as duodenal ulcer. And most commonly, it is caused by H. pylori, but it is also caused by stress, acids, as well as pepsin. The most common site for the development of the ulcer is the posterior wall of the first part of the duodenum, mainly because of direct exposure of this part to the acidic chyme, which is coming directly from the stomach before reaching the second part of the duodenum, where it is mixed with the pancreatic juices. And next is, Occasionally, an ulcer perforates the duodenal wall, permitting the contents to enter into the peritoneal cavity and causes peritonitis. Here, the duodenal ulcer is three times more common when compared to that of the gastric ulcer. And the duodenal ulcer erodes the pancreas or the gastroduodenal artery, causing burning, cramping and epigastric pain. By this, we concluded our topic that is anatomy of duodenum.